Attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. And the DDO next to him is going to call out a milestone in the count on the 7 minute mark. Jean-Marie Bourjad, a CNES man. Top. A zero. All right, we're in the seven-minute mark. We're to the final moments of final countdown. Why is this important? Yes, uh, we've now passed the key milestone in the launch chronology. In the last seven minutes prior to launch, we are in the synchronized sequence or automated sequence. And in this period, the launcher is fully automated. Right now, the onboard computers are running all their final checks. Hundreds of parameters are being validated and confirmed, ready for flights. You see the green status panels? All is go. These computers that you mentioned, Simon, are being, uh, there are two computers, actually. One's for the launcher's flight fluid systems, another for the electric system. Yes, uh, for the fluids, for example, this includes the opening of valves, tank pressure validations, these sort of things. And for the electrics, this includes automated tasks such as the final arming of all the pyrotechnic devices for what we're going to be calling uh, the staging events. If there's any interrupt in the sequence for whatever reason, then the sequence would have to recommence from the start. It's a complex series of operation running right down to liftoff, gradually letting the launcher become autonomous. Power is passing from the ground, which controls everything now to the onboard computers which will control everything. Afterward, some 1,500 people work around the space base in all. Our cameras are here in Jupiter, but others are working at uh, many other sites. And this is one of them, the launch zone. You can imagine they're very busy. This is where you usually work. Uh, yes, uh, that's right. Uh, and right now, there are two, two, two teams working in launch control. One is responsible for all the ground operations, the other for the readiness of the Ariane. So the launch site operations manager, he heads up one group and he coordinates here with mission control for the final authorization to launch. When all the conditions are right, he then okays this automated sequence at the seven minute mark. And the other team? The other team is headed up by the Ariane production manager here, Didi Orban. This team ensures the flight readiness of a vehicle and it oversees all the operations from launch vehicle assembly to the moment of launch. So how many people are we talking about in all? Hundreds? There'll be over a hundred people or so working in launch control right now. The launch operations manager, you saw Jean-Pierre Barlet, a veteran, and his people are at this moment going all over the final checks and verifications on all parts of Ariane's launch system. They're a little farther away, closer to the pad than uh, we are. We're farther away. We're about 15 kilometers. They're about two kilometers from the launch pad. We don't have a launch window, what they call a launch window tonight. We have a launch second. Why is that? That's right. So the ATV has to rendezvous and dock with the International Space Station. Consequently, there are a number of constraints that stipulate the launch time, such as the ATV readiness for launch, the International Space Station orbit and its position, the availability of a supporting tracking and data relay satellite system needed for the telemetry and telecommand during the ATV LEOP operations. Also, a go status from the ATV control center. So taking all the these factors into account the ATV flight for today it's planned as launch on time instead of a launch window giving us very often half an hour or more this is a collective decision in all for the nine months of the campaign some 880 technicians prepare the ATV for its launch tonight from many different organizations ESA, Astrium, Roscosmos and NASA the two space agencies and industry another center of action tonight the satellite preparation building what's going on there Yes, uh, since its arrival in CSG, the automated transfer vehicle preparation and checkout operations, including all the hazardous operations, fueling, for example, these have been carried out in what we call the S5 uh, processing facility. Now, what goes on there exactly? Well, the ATV is subjected to all the needed electrical tests, the propulsion system, and other pressurized tanks. These are checked out to ensure that there are no leaks. As the ATV was shipped in two parts, remember, they are assembled together here in the S5 facility. I think we saw that in, the, uh, in an earlier film. That's correct. And, of, of course, there's something like 500 kilograms of water being transferred to the International Space Station today. They're installed in the S5. We also have a dry cargo installation and flight batteries, all the propellant filling. It all takes place in S5, not necessarily in that sequence. The French Guiana site was chosen in 1964 among 14 possibilities, including Australia and Scandinavia, give you an idea of how, how far they were looking across the world. France wanted to build a new base. Why did they choose here? They found everything they were looking for. Number one, a large opening on the ocean to make a flying both north and east for different orbits possible and over an area that offers low risk to the population. Yes, uh, and as you mentioned, a low population, a low population density. Only 200,000 people or so live in uh, French Guiana. Most of this nation, it's a uh, lush tropical Amazon forest. Also, we're near the equator. We're five... Uh 
five uh, latitude north, I think, of the equator, which allows us a launch to benefit from what they call the sling effect. The uh, Earth's rotation get it, gets us more quickly into orbit. Yes, uh, the Earth's natural rotation, in fact, while being on the equator, we already have nearly half a kilometer, half a kilometer per second of uh, translational velocity. So the closer we get to the poles, this reduces to zero. So, so being here on the equator, it can be very beneficial, especially for, for our GTO missions. Also, no hurricanes. No hurricanes. No, no earthquakes, as they can strike other parts, particularly in the Caribbean. They even found nearby hills where radar and telemetry facilities can be installed to easily follow the launcher during her trajectory. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. The invited guests and the VIPs here are going to be shortly, I believe, making their way out to the terrace as I see the monitors are standing by the doors. Or maybe not tonight. Usually they go out and they can watch the launch from the terraces. There are two of them outside here in uh, Jupiter. Ariane lifts off from the pad, as we mentioned, about 14 kilometers away and passes right over us in Jupiter as she makes her way east. We're coming up on the one-minute mark. And we'll be into the final 60 seconds. You'll hear the DDO call out the one-minute mark in just a moment. You can follow all the action on the website. Remember, Ariane Space... Welcome to DDO. Attention for moins une minute. DDO and the one minute mark coming up. Top. À zéro, moins une minute. And now the guests are getting up at the one minute mark. Usually they, they, they go out early. They go out at two minutes. We're in the final 60 seconds, uh, Simon. All that's left to explain is the ignition sequence. What do we look for? Well, at uh, H0, the DDO will call out Allumage Volcan, the main stage ignition. But at this moment, we don't lift off yet. In fact, there will be seven second wait. For these uh, seven full seconds, the computers are checking the performance of this main engine as it's functioning and on the pad. If all is well, then, and only then, the order is given to light the two solid rocket boosters. At this point, there's no going back. We will be off. We're off in a minute. We're going to cut away, let you hear the DDO. Call out the final countdown. Enjoy the launch, everybody. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage EAP décollage. Tous les paramètres à bord sont nominaux. And so we are underway. Did you see at 18.52 local time and right on time, Ariane 5 began her mission, lifting up beautifully, showing a lot of power right from the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire, beginning her second mission of the year, the 2010 ATV, going to the International Space Station. Beautiful shots, always impressive for the people at the observation sites around the base, in their cars around the beaches, Ariane lifting off in her trail of gold. She's making a turn now. She's going to pass overhead. We're about 15 kilometers from a launch pad, and even here you can still feel the sensation of launch. But if you're watching from that close viewing station, which is only five kilometers away, you can really experience that sensation of the acoustic noise from those two solid rocket boosters as they provide right now 90% of a thrust, propelling the launch along its trajectory at ever higher velocity. It really is quite sensational to witness there in Toucan. How many uh, launches have you witnessed? I've been fortunate to witness two from there, plus, plus tonight from here. 777 tons is Ariane's weight at liftoff. The DDO is saying that everything is okay on board. She's burning, if you can believe it, five tons of fuel every second. Five tons of fuel every second. 2.5 tons in each booster, plus the core stage, the lower stage, burning another 300 kilos per second. The launcher now following the program in the onboard computer, which gives all the orders, including stage separations, which we'll soon begin to see. We are in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn so you can follow Ariane. Right now, the first flight phase, the single Vulcan core stage burning with the boosters. The boosters are going to burn for another four or five seconds, and then they will be extinguished, and you'll see them 
Probably. Uh, uh, looks like the extinction of the boosters. You can see them falling way on either side. The orange, the orange lights are the boosters flaving out, and the single point of light in the middle of your screen is Ariane continuing to burn. Yes, the DDO has announced the separation of the two solid rocket boosters, and coming at a time at uh, 65 kilometers in altitude. Take a look, Simon, at the left side of your screen. On the upper left, you have the cursor crawling up a line. Below that, some letters and some numbers, A and V. Can you explain? Yes, uh, so looking at the screen, this is Ariane's trajectory. It's showing us how the flight is progressing. The curve, it's a computer simulation of the actual trajectory. And that white dot on the curve, this is the actual position of a launch vehicle right now. There, there are actually two trajectories. One is the optimal trajectory and the real-time trajectory. As long as we're one on top of the other, we're right where we should be, right? Exactly. Superimposed, perfect. So the V means velocity. And right now, we are traveling at 2.4 kilometers per second. And the A, this is the altitude. So now we're at 106 uh, kilometers already. We're out of the Earth's atmosphere, or will be shortly, which means the fairing can be Jettison. There it is, coming right on time at about 110 kilos. We're using a new fairing separation system tonight, aren't we? That's right. Uh, and in the past few years, Ruex based in Switzerland, the Ariane 5 fairing manufacturer, <coughs> they have been developing a new system to support the fairing separation event. In this new system, with the aid of pyrotechnics, the fairing first separates from the Ariane uh, around its uh, circular base. It happens very, very quickly. Doesn't very it? quickly indeed. 56 uh, milliseconds to be precise. And during this time of separation, it's aided by a series of uh, very precisely tuned springs around the body of Ariane. So at this point we can say the fairing has been separated? Only by a few millimeters more. Then a command is sent to separate the fairing two halves. The whole event is over in less than uh, 100 milliseconds. Now they wanted also a new design, a shock reduction system, a low shock. Fairing, yes, uh, uh, exactly. The, the whole concept, this endeavors to minimize the shock environment transmitted to the Ariane's passengers. Today it's the first mission of this system, so uh, a special hello to the whole work team in Switzerland. The new shock reduction system was five years in the making. The fairing separated first horizontally, then pushed up and away laterally. We're in the second powered flight phase, the single core engine burning. Simon, what's the role of the single uh, core stage? Well, the EPC, this is the main cryogenic stage, and it, uh, for some details, it's 5.4 meters in diameter, and it's 31 meters long. It's powered by one Vulcan 2 engine that burns liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The Vulcan 2 engine provides up to 1,400,000 newtons of thrust in the vacuum of space. And its nozzle, it's, uh, it's gimbaled to, to provide uh, pitch, in your, uh, pitch in your control for the, uh, for the Ariane vehicle. We're doing fine on board, Ariane performing flawlessly. More of the mission in a moment, but for now, the latest news from Ariane Space. And back here in the uh, flight control room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Jerry Jason, the lead flight director for uh, this ATV-4 mission of the Albert Einstein on console at this hour, uh, as he will be on docking day on June 15th, now that uh, the Albert Einstein is on its way. We're five minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Everything uh, continuing to go very well. Uh, the first uh, stage cutoff and separation of that initial stage, uh, which is known by the acronym of uh, EPC, as it is called, which is the Etage Principal Cryotechnique. Uh, that uh, first stage will drop away. You're looking right now at the visiting vehicle officer, Brian Lohman, here in the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room, uh, seated uh, behind a model of the automated transfer vehicle. Uh, Lohman uh, will be uh, working with his counterparts at the ATV Control Center in Toulouse, France, uh, over the next uh, 10 days to monitor the progress uh, of the automated transfer vehicle as it proceeds towards its link up with the aft port of the Zvezda service module on June 15th. That docking is now scheduled on Saturday, June 15th at 8.46 a.m. Central Time. We'll be providing live coverage of the docking of the ATV-4 to the International Space Station beginning at 7 a.m. Central Time on Saturday, June 15th. As we mentioned at the uh, top of our broadcast, it will take about an, uh, one hour, 38 minutes uh, between launch and the time the solar arrays are deployed as well as the proximity link boom that is necessary uh, for the transmission of data for the ATV-4's final approach to the International Space Station. 
With that, uh, we'll be returning now uh, down to the Jupiter Control Center in uh, Karoo, French Guiana, with the Ariane 5 uh, having been launched on time and the ATB-4 on its way for more coverage from Ariane Spas of the flight of Albert Einstein. By sites uh, in Australia. We won't be here for the acquisition of Perth. No, this comes at uh, 2 hours and 24 minutes into the mission, but Ariane will be tracked by the others during this uh, broadcast. All of her trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground, whether by land or by sea. The launcher sending radar and telemetry back, and the network of stations keep constant.